Israel's Prime Minister faces a fight from within. After being indicted for corruption, Benjamin Netanyahu's own party is calling for his ouster. Will they succeed or can the country's longest serving leader extend his time in the top job? I'm Imran Garda and today's newsmaker is Israel's indicted Prime Minister. In a recent poll, 56% of Israelis said their prime minister should step down. After 13 years in power, Benjamin Netanyahu has faced numerous challenges to his premiership. But this time, arguably the biggest battle to unseat him isn't coming from the opposition, it's coming from his own party. After Netanyahu was charged with bribery, fraud and breach of trust, a lawmaker from Likud has now called for a leadership vote. Netanyahu has obliged and Israel's ruling party could have a new head within weeks. But the Prime Minister is unlikely to relinquish power without a fight. He claims the charges against him are politically motivated and that he's the victim of an attempted coup. He's promised to remain in office and do everything he can to clear his name. But with a third election in less than a year looking increasingly likely, well, they could do all it can to force him out. Or will he fend off yet another challenge to his time in office? Well, to answer this, I'm joined from Tel Aviv by political analyst Mitchell Barak. He was the spokesman for former President Shimon Peres and Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. Eli Hazan joins us from West Jerusalem. He's the foreign affairs director for Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party. And completing our panel is Sami Abu Shahada. He's a member of the Knesset for the Ballad Party within uh, the Arab Joint List Alliance. Good to have you all on the program. Mitchell Barak, let's start with you. Is it is time up for Netanyahu? Is he done for? Well, I mean, uh, you know, this is the prime minister that has many, many lives. Uh, it's hard to say that time is up for him. Uh, he certainly has a lot of challenges, meaning the fact of the matter is uh, two things are taking place here. One, he ran in the last two elections, tied the first time with blue and white and lost by one seat to blue and white in the last one, although the block is bigger. And he's failed to form a government twice. And now he wants to go to election a third time. And if that doesn't work, he can go for a fourth time and a fifth time and a sixth time until he's elected prime minister. But the big news is really that the prime minister, while he was in office for the longest serving prime minister, he has been charged with bribery, with breach of trust in three separate cases where he's going to be charged. Uh, these are not light cases. This is selling political favors. The debate is whether he actually, whether favorable press coverage is actually a bribe. It's not money, uh, but he's lost a lot of trust uh, in his party and within the public. And I think the, the, there's a growing sentiment to ask him to step down, to move aside. He's really an acting prime minister at this point and not to drag the country into the third election. Anyone in the Likud almost, including the people that are, the person that is challenging him, can form a government. We can have a government in Israel by the end of the week if he'll step aside. Okay, Ali Hassan, the man from his party, is it time for him to step aside, get out of the way and allow the politicians within the party to choose somebody else and for them to get a government together? Because from the Attorney General's advice, from the Supreme Court ruling, it seems as if the man is not fit to lead the country anymore. So Likud is a democratic uh, party and Netanyahu was elected so many times and the majority of the, mem of the members of all the voters don't want him to go. You have to understand, we see it as a political persecution if he, and if Netanyahu will surrender, for us it would be the end of the democracy in Israel. We don't want him to step down. On the other hand, we are a democratic party. We go into our primary the majority and I assume that he will get the majority. The show must go on. You still believe that the Supreme Court and the Attorney General are all leftists, right? Well, there is a law in Israel. I don't know if you know, but in Israel we don't have a constitution. We have a basic laws. One of them is the basic law of the government. And it says uh, specifically that Prime Minister under indictment can continue in his position. Uh, now, the other side is trying to change this equation. We don't let them do that. But to answer my question specifically, you believe that he's being politically persecuted by leftists in 
the justice yeah, yeah, yeah. system. Of course, no <laughs> doubt about it. In Israel, we have a big, deep state with a lot of influence. Let me explain to you how it works. And in 1977, the left wing in Israel used to control all over, academy, uh, media, and of course the political system. Since 1977, most of the time they did not win election, and therefore they are looking for alternative way to take down the right wing. Netanyahu is the leader of the right wing, and they know that if they want to take down the right wing, they need to, to look after Netanyahu, and we will not let them do that. The Israel okay. is a democracy, okay. we had an election, and yeah. Okay, Sami Abu Shahada, what does this news mean for you, and what does it mean to your joint list? Because you were central to his campaigning, especially <clears throat> while the axe of indictment was hanging over him. It seemed as if he got more and more harsh in his words regarding Arabs involved in Israeli politics. What does this mean to you? First of all, for us, the Prime Minister Netanyahu should have left his office long time ago, not just because of the, all the corruption that he is accused of, but we think that the man should have been in jail because of his wars on Gaza, mainly because of his war crimes in Gaza, should have left his office long time ago. But this is not a democratic society. And this is not what we were expecting in Israel. Now he is going He is going to leave his office mainly because of corruption. I don't think that Netanyahu has too much time now in the Israeli politics. He might be running for the next elections. You know. this, is, this will not be a surprise, mainly because of technical things. We have very short time till the elections, with something like 17 days. I don't think that much can happen till then. So he might be leading his, his party, but I don't think that he has much longer time in the Israeli politics. From our point of view, this is one of the worst leaders that happened in the, for the Arab-Palestinian minority in, in the Israeli political system. The man is a fascist. He has been leading a fascist society. The so, Israeli society has been deteriorating very fast towards very extreme right and fascism. And we would like to see his era finish as much as fast as possible. Michel Barak. Is Sami Abu Shahada right that Netanyahu has dragged Israeli society so far right that it's going in a fascist direction? Well, I wouldn't use the word fascism, and I certainly wouldn't agree with the war crimes in Gaza. What I would say that he is dangerous to democracy uh, because of the, the insightful language that he used, the, the racist overtones towards uh, the Israeli Arab citizens of Israel uh, who are citizens of the country. There is no reason for that, President Rivlin actually uh, criticized him publicly for that, which got a very nice tweet from the son of the prime minister, Yair Netanyahu, who said that Donald <coughs> Trump is his president and not Ruby Rivlin. Uh, but, it, you know, this kind of uh, hateful language does not have any place in Israeli politics. Uh, we polled for the Conrad Adenauer Foundation during the election campaign, 50 percent of the Israeli Arab population would support their parties joining the government. Another 30 percent would support them uh, 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 supporting the government from the outside but not joining. And I think we see from the Israeli Arab participation this last election and some of the things that have been said is that there's more of a willingness to be part of Israeli society. And I think that's one of, ironically, one of Netanyahu's legacies is that he's <coughs> bringing out Israeli Arabs to participate. So, you know, the fascist language has to stop what, uh, what the uh, Likud spokesman said, I mean, it's almost laughable. The fact that he said the show must go on was very good because it is a show. It's absolutely a show like the circus is what this is, where this a political persecution, meaning he even admits himself. Right. Since 1977, the Likud has been in power for most of those 40 years. But yet in his mind and in the warped mind of many of the Likud followers, the leftists are still controlling the country. They're controlling the media, although Netanyahu actually, you know, influences a newspaper called Yisrael Ayom. They're controlling the media, except one of the cases against him was for the Wallet uh, news site, which he was getting favors for, and he was calling up to change headlines. And, you know, Arnon Milchin, another person who was giving him tons of cigars and champagne, owned a television station. Uh, you know, but the left still controls the media, and they still control academia, and they still control you know, the Justice Department, even though the justice ministers for the last 40 years have been very much from the Likud and from the right of center. Come on, the, the people don't believe this anymore. Meaning you, you, it, you can tell the same lies again and again, and at some point the Israeli public is gonna say, enough, it's time to change. You've been in power for 10 years. When I worked for Netanyahu, he supported a mandatory 
two-term limit for the prime minister. Because as he said, if you can't do the job in two terms, you can't, right. you're never going to be able to. Right. And I think it's time for him to move on. And that's what the Israeli public is saying. He also said he had a lot to say about right. corruption when Ehud Olmert was in the spotlight. Suddenly he's changed his tone. Eli Hazan, a lot for you to respond to. Come in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what Mitchell Barakev said is a lot of lies and something which is completely untrue. Let's speak about the media, Michel Barak. Let's speak about the media, except Israel Ayom. And by the way, the leftist politician tried to close down Israel Ayom in 2014. It was, not, it was Netanyahu who prevented it. What Michel Barak has said is a lot of lies. And of course, we deny it completely. It is true, we are in, in power almost 42 years. But you have to understand that we were not able to change the atmosphere, as what Michel has said, in academy, in media, in the justice system, it's still a left-wing uh, system, and this is what we need to deal with. Besides that, I want to ask Mitchell, have you heard in, hist in, the, in the history of the state about any politician who was charged of good coverage or positive coverage in the media? This is an invention. As the state's attorney said, this is a precedent, and we do it for the next generations. Not on behalf of Netanyahu. So, so, we will not let it happen. I just want to gauge the temperature a little bit. Okay, okay, listen, Mitchell, you don't, you, you don't have to answer that, right? I, I want to gauge the political atmosphere and the temperature a little bit here, Eli Khazan, and I want to ask you pretty directly. You have on this very panel an Arab MK, Sami Abu Shahada. Do, do you recognize him as an equal participant in Israeli democracy, or do you consider him a member of a sort of fifth column, somebody who's trying to infiltrate your society and destroy your democracy, because that's one of the things that Netanyahu has implied to his fans during this election. Go ahead. What is Sami Abu let's Shahada to you? Let's, let's make it clear. Let's make it clear once and for all. We are making a distinction between the Arab citizens of the State of Israel and between the Arab joint list People like this honorable MK, they support of terrorism. On the other hand, we have Muslim members of the party in Likud. We invested approximately 15 billion shekels in order to integrate the Arab population into the Israeli society. We make a big distinction between it. Now, he called us a war crimes, uh, and he accuses us of war crimes in Gaza. They shoot missiles from Gaza. What would he want okay. to do? In but just because, okay, okay but you know, because Hamas and Islamic Jihad, okay, but, but certainly, but because Hamas and Islamic Jihad shoot missiles, that doesn't preclude any possibility that Israel might have committed war crimes in Gaza. That doesn't make him less of an Israeli citizen, no, we does were it? No, we were not committing war crimes in Israel. We were not committing war crimes in Gaza. We protect ourselves. Think about you. What would you do if someone would shoot missiles into your state? You will defend yourself. This is what uh, reasonable people are doing. I'm from South Africa. Nobody's shooting missiles into our state. Sami Abu Shahada. Of course, so you don't need you don't need to deal with it. Sami Abu Shahada. Yes. Imran, you know, all of, all of what has been happening in the last few years is that Israel was really changing from being a kind of Jewish democracy, which is an oxymoron the way we see it. This is something that cannot happen into clearly being much more Jewish than, than democratic. All this is affecting everything in the Israeli politics and society. And we are seeing now all this incitement against the Arab-Palestinian minority. And imagine what would happen if a prime minister in one of the states of Europe would make a very urgent meeting like Netanyahu did a few days ago. And he would do the whole 12 minutes he had as a speech to incite against 20% of the population, mainly if they were Jewish population. This would not have been passed in anyone in the world or accepted anywhere in the world. What's happening in Iran is really unbelievable. I really can't understand. One, I think one of the most important questions now in the international politics should be, why are the Jews in Israel allowed to be racist? Why is it allowed for them to be racist? All these victims of racism that have suffered from racism for a long time in their history. Why are they allowed to be racist? Why is it allowed for a prime minister in this state to do all this incitement against 20% of the population? Why is it allowed for someone who is extreme right fascist like Lieberman to continue in his incitement against the Arab-Palestinian community? Why does it considered legal or legitimate 
from other states, not just from the Israeli racist society. I don't have much expectations from within the Israeli society, but at least from the international arena for states like South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, all the democratic states. Why do they still agree on this to happen? Mitchell Barak, I want to focus the attention once again on his defense right now as he's fighting back or, or biting back. So he's called this a witch hunt. He's called it an attempted coup. He's toured the Golan Heights. He's mentioned the Iranian threat again. I guess this is a very good tool available to him. National security, I'm your savior. You need me to, to, to keep Israel strong. I wonder how strong is that tool right now? How, how much of the Israeli population would still believe in him despite the fact that he's been indicted for corruption in him being the man to keep Israel safe? Uh, listen, there's no question that the prime minister has many successes in both the security and the diplomatic arena, internationally and uh, in the security arena. But the bottom line is, is he's only run in his entire life on the security ticket. So he's very comfortable. Every election, there's some security. Issue. It's either the Iranians, it's Hezbollah, it's Gaza, it's something. So now it's going to be something else. And, and you know, again, during the, we, he lo launched a, a, a pretty much very big operation, not an invasion, an operation, during the time that, uh, that Benny Gantz had a, uh, you know, the mandate to form a government. Uh, so he uses the security to remind Israelis that he's really the figure that is going to keep Israel safe. It's worked up until a certain point, but you have, again, Benny Gantz is, is, the, is trying to establish himself as a leader. He's been the chief of staff. He has Moshe Ya'alon, a former chief of staff and defense minister around him. He has Gabi Ashkenazi, another uh, former chief of staff. So I think people are getting the impression that the country could be in good hands. And there's only so much you can talk about with this, uh, with this security issue, especially which, since <clears throat> Israel doesn't really have a functioning government for the past year. And he's willing to put it in to another six months of no real government. There are no budgets. There's, there's uh, you know, the, the, the police chief. There are people that haven't been appointed because we're in an interim government. So you can't keep crying wolf again and again when the wolf is really not there. And I think people are ready to take a risk and to say, it's enough already, meaning there's too much background noise around Netanyahu. And the fact that the attorney general, who he's now attacked, he's attacked the media, it's people within his party, it's now the attorney general, it's the police, it's everyone is against him. He's got the whole world against him, like Samson. And it looks like he's just ready to bring the country down if he can't be prime minister. And people are ready to say an indictment on bribery and breach of trust and getting free gifts and getting free news coverage, which he views as something that's important enough that he and his wife are involved in it on a daily basis can be considered a bribe. And that's, a, that's a, a crime that includes jail time. So he's got a really serious case against him. Let him go defend himself. Let him go to court. He can always rehabilitate himself. He'll always be popular in the Likud. I don't think anyone will take his place at that level that he's been. Let him go defend himself come back and join the party. But I think a lot of Israelis at this point, especially given he's failed in two elections. So what does he do if he fails in two elections? Most politicians would say, I got the message. I didn't form a government. The people didn't vote me into office. Let's give someone else a chance, especially since there are four or five candidates today in the Likud that could join together with blue and white and have a national unity government with Lieberman. Most people would take that message, but not Netanyahu. Netanyahu is saying, let's go to a third election. And you know what my prediction is? If we go to a third election and Netanyahu is not the, is not the prime minister, we'll go for a fourth election mm. and then a fifth. It's enough already. A lot of Israelis are saying that. Right. Ali Khazan, if he is replaced within the party, if your new leader is Gideon Saar or Nir Barakat or whoever it might be, are you going to stay loyal to Benjamin Netanyahu or will you throw your weight behind the new leader? I don't understand why you speak about replacing Netanyahu. We are not in this situation. Again, They're according talking to the about Constitution it. They've got of six Likud, weeks to do it. That, they, they've called meetings about this. Haven't you read the news? Or am I... No, we don't want to... Um, I mean, again... Am I more across Israeli it, news than you are? We agreed to an election for leadership within six weeks. So, Eli, you're saying 
Ellie, you're saying there's no possibility in the world that Netanyahu is going to lose because Netanyahu agreed to an election within six weeks. That's what was in the papers this morning. Are you saying that's not true? No, 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 Michel, you cannot say so. You cannot say so. What I'm saying right now is what is I see is the Likudniks has a big sentiment to Netanyahu. And let me explain one more thing that Michel did not mention. We in Likud, we don't replace the leaders. If you look back at history, Menachem Begin stepped down by himself. Yitzhak Shamir was the is same story in 1999. Is there going to be an election Sorry? in six within for leader? Will there be an election within Likud? Yes, of course. We are a democratic, again, so we are a democratic party. And yes, is, is it possible that Netanyahu loses? Is yes, it possible of course. that Netanyahu loses? Okay, so then maybe just answer the question and possible. say, okay, if Netanyahu loses, this is, I'll go after the new leader. Why don't you say, if Netanyahu loses, you will work for the new leader? Will you do that? No, because we want, <laughs> well, excuse me for a second. Right. We are a democratic party. Okay. And okay. I will okay. vote for Netanyahu. Okay, you support him. Okay, so it's happening. It's You're a democratic, democratic party, but, but it won't happen. It's dangerous to change okay. the leader. Okay, okay, so it's happening, but it, but it won't happen in, in your opinion. Got it, Ali. Sami Abu Shahada, I want you to have a little listen to Amir Peretz, the chairman of the Labour Party. I have a question for you off the back of that. Have a little listen to this. Netanyahu's indictments are the real reason that a new government has not been formed in Israel. We will not be able to accept a situation in which an indicted prime minister continues serving as if nothing happened. There is no doubt that the political deadlock emanates first and foremost from the personal situation of the prime minister. Therefore, we intend to petition the High Court so that it will rule that a prime minister in such a condition who did not receive the trust of the current parliament won't be able to continue in his role. Sami, it's almost rare to, to hear from Labour these days because people see them as almost dead and buried in the Israeli political spectrum. But as a member of the joint list, when you see all this criticism of Netanyahu coming from the left, from the joint list and so on, what's the calculations right now? Is there, are you going to be making friendships that you didn't have in the past in order to have an Israel after Netanyahu? Nobody is really that sure, Amran, what's going to happen. I think that we have something like 90% we are going for the next elections. And I think, meanwhile, we are seeing Netanyahu leading the Likud party again, and maybe leading the whole Israeli state to a disaster, because the man is running the whole state, the whole government, the whole thing that got to do with elections, according to his criminal issues. The man wants to stay in power in order not to be in jail. This is why he is a very dangerous man, and he is ready to do anything. So it's really hard to know. There's a a lot, a big wave of instability here in Israel that has been happening in the last year. No, nobody expected that we would need second elections in, in last September, till the last minute. Seems to be we are going to be till the last minute also not that clear about maybe third elections in one year in this unstable system. Meanwhile, like in any other very fascist society, there's this kind of uh, adoration to the to the El Doce, to the leader. People believe in him. There is nothing th that logical. But uh, this is what could happen also in Israel. Berlusconi, with all his corruption, was elected more than once in Italy. Mm -hmm. It could happen also, again, with Netanyahu. This is why he is taking us for the next election. So we, we really can't know what's going on right. in Israel. OK, almost out of time. Just enough time for me to quote to you Aaron David Miller, the former Middle East negotiator, writing for CNN, saying, Netanyahu will make this fight and likely exit as painful, prolonged, and destructive as possible. We'll have to wait and see. Mitchell Barak, Ali Hazan, and Sami uh, Abu Shahada, it's been a pleasure having you all on the Newsmakers. I thank you very much for joining us.
Thanks so much for watching this episode of The Newsmakers with me, Imran Garda. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.